hello welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new my name is Emily and I try to put videos out once a week whether it's cooking beading or running um, I am falling behind on my videos but um, my beadwork takes forever to do and it's just really really time-consuming so I wanted to show you guys this one that I just finished it was supposed to be rose gold hues so I think that it turned out really really well I love it I just finished it yesterday I'm gonna put it in the mail today but I wanted to show you guys first what a finished bead strip looks like just really nice really pretty um, I also wanted to say thank you I've been getting messages on Instagram which my Instagram um, handle or whatever I'm not big on social media is a uh, big bend beadwork so you can find me there um, I also have a Facebook page for Big Ben Beadwork, so if you guys are trying to get in contact with me, you can do it there. I've gotten some really sweet messages from you guys just thanking me for putting this information out there and saying how much that it has helped you. I've gotten pictures of people's beadwork that they've done for themselves and friends and family and even some people that are trying to start a business like I did. That is so cool. I think that's awesome. That's why I wanted to start this channel because when I was trying to start a side hustle and make a business no one was doing tutorials or they were but it wasn't exactly um, what I was looking for so what I wanted to say is the best way that you can say thank you to me besides sending me all those sweet messages is subscribe to my channel like my videos comment on my videos it helps in the YouTube algorithm and makes my channel more visible to others um, I am trying to monetize my channel, obviously. Um, I'm putting videos out there for free right now and would love to just get something back for that. In order to do that, I have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. I'm at about 415 for subscribers right now, so still a long way to go in that department. And my watch time is nowhere near 4,000. So besides subscribing, liking, and commenting, Another thing that you can do to greatly help my channel is to click on the beadwork playlist or even my cooking playlist if you watch those and let them play all the way through. That will get my watch time up and it will really, really help me out. Having said that, today's video is the long awaited bead tool tutorial. Um, the software that I'm using to record my screen only lets me record in five minute increments. Five minutes is not enough time to talk about the bead tool work that I'm going to be doing. So. I don't really know if it's going to be like choppy or if I'm going to have to um, like piece everything together. So we shall see. But I, what I'm going to be doing is a navy pink orange turquoise black and white belt and she wants feathers and arrows on it. So I already designed the feather, I already designed the arrows just to save some time. So I'm going to basically just be showing you how to use the colors, how to copy, paste, mirror, um, my belts are always 17 wide and then about 300 long. The length does differ just depending on the designs and how many of the designs I can fit into that space. Obviously if it's, um, you know, a, a design that's got to be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, that's okay. It doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. My leather partner is awesome and is really flexible in her measurements um, as far as it goes with beadwork. So um, it doesn't really matter how long my bead strips are, she can make it fit. Uh, I think that's all that I wanted to say. And um, so it's gonna switch from me here to like a picture in picture type thing. So we'll see how this goes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here and supporting the channel. If you wanna get in contact with me again, it can be on Instagram or Facebook and check out Big Ben Beadwork. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to show you guys how I design a belt. So just for time's sake, I did already design the feather and I already designed this arrow. So all I did was um, make a little outline. That's what this black is. It's 17 wide by I think 300 long. And if you come down here and you kind of run, like look right here at this spot and you run your arrow, it shows you what column you're on. So I did 
300 wide and like I said I can make it bigger if I need to to fit the pattern or I can make it a little smaller if I need to um, so what what Justine and I do my leather partner is we have a dummy row so that's what this black row is I don't want to um, go outside of that and I don't want to put any of my design onto that because when she inlays it this strip does get covered it gets like wrapped in leather just as like an extra added um, layer of protection so what I like to do when I'm designing my belts is design half of it and then select the whole thing copy it mirror it move it and paste it so that's it's exactly the same so i will um work on half of you know half of 300 is 150 so um this is 151 so i really want to be there so what i'm going to do is erase this column so i know not to go past this in my design so like I said earlier, this client wants navy, pink, orange, turquoise, and then I chose to add black and white just as contrast colors, and they go well with those colors. She also wanted feathers and arrows. This is my first time ever doing feathers and arrows. I actually designed this feather a while back because I would like to put it on a cap and do a big bin beadwork cap for myself. Um, I need uh, a cap with that with my name on it. I don't even have one of those yet. I haven't had time to make one. So anyway, this is my first time getting to use this and I'm really excited. Um, I actually already had it in these colors before she told me the colors that she wanted to use. So I'm doing navy, turquoise, and white, and uh, black as a contrast color. Uh, so I didn't have to do any changes to that. And then I just designed the arrow. I'm probably going to tweak that a little bit. Uh, I don't love it, but um, just for this video's purpose, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, so I like to add X's into my beadwork. It's just a great transition um, into the next pattern. So what I did, um, you can see right here, I've got two little orange squares, and that's just telling me that's the middle of the 17. So I'm going to go off of this and I'm going to use the colors that she liked. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, should I make it wide? I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going <clears> to <throat> make that one white and not make it extra wide. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, um, oh, when you're, when you're trying to do your design, you have to click this pencil up here and the color that you want, and that's how you um, start designing. So I'm going to make an X just like this and I'm only going to do half of this because like I said I like to um, copy paste and mirror it so that everything's the same so let's see I think I'm going to do like white between them and just kind of see what I think about it so I'm going to skip and do turquoise here You can hear that in the background. My kids are watching Despicable Me while I'm doing this. <laughs> so if you hear minions, sorry. If you're a parent, you know what's up. Um, I think I want to add a navy in there between before I do pink. So let's go down here and select the navy. Okay, and then if you make a mistake like that, you can just go up here and click undo, and it undoes the last um, square that you marked. But if you draw like a whole line and you need to undo it, so like I'm making a huge mistake, you can just click undo and it will take that whole squiggly off. It's just the last time that you let go of your mouse or that you clicked your mouse. Okay. And then I'm also going to add, I guess, some pink in there. No, but I'm not using carnation pink. I'm using this hot pink. Also, I always tell my clients, um, the bead tool has a lot of options for colors. I'll show you guys in just a second. Um, but it's rare that the beads that you order are going to match it perfectly. So like this is the palette of everything, you know, that they have and it's different 
um, I don't even know how many colors they have. A lot. They have different hues for all of these colors. Um, and once you select one, it gets put into your pattern. So these are all the colors that I've used like on all of these caps. So it saves those colors for you. Um, anyway, so I always tell my clients when I send them their pictures, like this is just what I had available in my um, bead software, but it will look different, you know, when I use the actual beads. And everything beads better than it looks on the software. I do always tell them that as well. So that's looking kind of rainbowish. I don't know if I love that, but we're going to go with it just for time's sake. And like I said, I will probably tweak this some more after this video. But what I'm going to do is, so I just clicked on this like uh, dashed line up here, and that's how you select things. And I selected this whole area. So what I'm going to do is go up here to edit. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to hit edit again. And I'm going to hit mirror, and you see how it flipped it. And then I'm going to move it to where I want it to be. And then I'm going to click edit again and hit paste. And it's going to paste my design like that. So it's exactly the same. Um, let's see. And I will just kind of piddle with this. I like to, like whatever is the last color that I used. So it was that pink. I do like to um, like run that uh, down so that it connects like to the next X, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Um, oh, shoot. Okay, this is a great opportunity to do undo. I make a lot of mistakes when I'm doing this. I'm gonna stop right there, and then I'll show you um, kind of how I finish this. Okay, so what I want to do is take this same design. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to edit, copy, and I'm going to drag this down here. Let's see. And then I'm going to edit and paste that. Okay. And then I'll like fill this stuff in here in a minute. And then I'm going to add this X over here as well. And actually, I'm just going to add half of that X. But first, hold on, I need to um, drag this across so it just connects everything nicely. I'm stop about right there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is um, copy, let's see, copy this. So edit, copy, and then I'm going to drag it down here. Mama, look. Mm -hmm. It has a flat. That's okay, baby. I'll help you with just a second. Okay, and then I'm going to edit and paste right there. So I'm just going to pretend like that's as much as I'm going to do on this belt. It's not. I'll do a lot more, but I'm just for designing sake, designing purposes. So like I said, I always design like half of my belt and then I like to copy mirror and paste it. So what I'm going to do, so I'm on this dashed line I'm going to select this whole thing that I just did, so to there. Then I'm going to go up here and say edit, copy, edit, mirror, and I'm going to drag it down here, and I'm going to line this up exactly how I want it. This is actually really cute. And then I'm going to paste it right there. Don't forget to paste it. Um, I guess I'll show you. So if you forget to paste it and you think it's just there and you um, click out of it, it doesn't stick. So you have to 
um, start over with it, which is really easy to do. And I, you know, when I first started using this program, I did that a million times and forgot to click paste and uh, it's a giant pain, but it's fine. So edit copy, edit mirror, drag it to where you want it to be, which I want it to be here, right there. And then I'm gonna paste it this time and it's there. So I'm gonna go down here and whoa, that ended up being longer. I wonder why that didn't work out. Let's see, we've got a arrow there, we've got a feather which is fine, that goes to what, 322, that's totally fine. So um, what I would do is just, I need my shiny block. What I would do is just um, go up here to the pencil and I would extend my dummy line. No big deal, I sure don't mind doing a little um, extra design work. That's gonna add like an inch onto the beadwork, which is fine. It'll just be a little less leather work. So that's A-OK. -okay. Um, anyway, so I like how that is looking so far. So what I do is I will also like fill in this space with um, just something. Let's see what color do I want to use. Let's do uh, this turquoise and I'll just add like some design aspects. Uh, just to kind of fill it in a little bit. So I like the turquoise and orange together, like I said. So I'll just add this stuff. My daughter is blowing up a bat right here, so if you hear that, that is her. Say hi, B. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, and then I'm also, I guess I'm gonna add a little black just to accent that. Can you go do that somewhere else, please? So it's not loud so they can hear me. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. So I like that. That looks pretty good. Um, and then I will, just to make sure it's the same on the other side, like I said, I'm real big on that. I'm going to copy... Edit mirror. I'm going to drag it to the other end and stick it right there. And then I'm not going to forget to paste it. Okay, so now it looks the same on both sides. Hmm, what else do I want to do? I actually really like how this is looking. So, um, when I I am done with the design. There's not a way to like take a, a whole picture of it. So you always hit save and it takes a second to save. So if that's still showing blue, it's still saving. I have tried like the print preview before. I'll show you what that does. Um, it just shows you like the colors that you're using like how many beads uh, you need, but I uh, do my stuff kind of weird. So it doesn't show you like the full um, picture. So what I like to do is, not that, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I like to go to pattern, open, and then I'll, like if you double click on them, it opens it up, but if you just click on it one time, it shows you over here what it looks like. So when I send this to clients, I will just drag this and make it bigger, and I'll take a picture on my phone of this, like the whole thing, like just of the, the belt that's, that's hers. And then I will also go back into my design and I'll take like close-ups of each element so that they get the whole overview but then they also can see like the finished product as well. Um, and then I was also gonna tell you like over here, this doesn't really work for me because I do my designs like on the same page, but if you were gonna do like a design per page, let me show you like I'll open one that only has 
um, like one, like I made this for my mother-in-law. So if I go into this, it shows me how many silver beads I need. I need 213 silver beads, 330, 338 black, 164 this frosted. It tells you how many of each bead you need. So um, if you don't have like a big bead stash like I do, or if you're just starting and you just need enough beads like for a project, you know how many you need to order because the bead tool tells you. Um, I believe this bead tool is still like $49.95 and it's a one-time deal. So I bought it three years ago. I've used it for three years. I do all of my, you know, designs on here. Um, and it's, it's just a really great tool to have. When I first started, I tried to do them on graph paper and that was a major, um, time consumer and pain in the, you know what, so let me see if there's anything else that I need to show you. I don't use a lot of the features on here. I do most of it like just by hand, just clicking like one thing at a time. Uh, but I do know people that use like the, you can insert text into this. Like if you hit add text, you can write things and um, it'll insert text in for you. I do my own text, so I don't use that. Um, you can also like upload a, picture and it will show like on your screen and it'll turn uh, your picture into beads so you can like bead really realistic pictures and things like that um you can zoom in what did i just do zoom in really far and when i'm actually doing like when i'm beading i zoom it in and then i'll select like whatever row I'm on so I know like what colors I'm using and I don't get lost and then I'll move it to the next one and then the next one and then the next one so I don't get lost. Um, it's got uh, different shapes you can do so if you're like trying to do like a circle you can make a circle out of whatever color you're on. Um, let's see. Always save it. I don't know what else is on here. Also, Bead Tool has a YouTube channel, which I just learned about and actually learned some things from it, but it's very old. They haven't posted a video in like, I want to say 10 years. So um, you can also check that out. And that's a really great tutorial. Um, I think that's about all. Um, I also, I had a woman um, message me on, I think Facebook the other day. And she was saying that it's not compatible with an iPad, which surprised me. Um, so I will email them and ask if um, they're thinking about making it compatible with iPads or if they can recommend another uh, bead, bead software um, that is compatible with iPads. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. Um, good luck with your... Um, project, whatever it is that you're doing. Send me pictures if you've got them. Make sure to uh, subscribe, like, comment, click the notification bell, watch these videos all the way through. It helps me so much and I'll see you in my next one. Also, uh, feel free to make suggestions on what videos you guys want to see. All right, adios.